Kyle, the quarterback injury was a huge factor in the second half of last season, but are there other lessons learned from that? From the quarterback injury or last year? I missed the point of that. Just the, if you want to call it a downturn in the second half of the season, what's to be learned from that? From last year's downturn? Well, you know, we came off a, a big win against Stanford and, and uh, really didn't get much going after that. That was disappointing to, to not capitalize on a uh, a victory like that and, and get some momentum. And, uh, you know, we, we did have Travis hurt, I think it was his hand, that he hurt the very next week against Arizona and, and was uh, hurt on and off the rest of the season until obviously the, the concussion a, a few weeks later. But, but uh, you know, we want to try to obviously – Play much better in the second half of the season this year than we did last year, but uh, you know we're we're healthy right now for the most part. We've had some guys uh, that uh, we've missed here and there uh, throughout the course of the first five games, so we haven't been completely healthy, but certainly in much better health, and particularly at the quarterback position than we were last year. Does that even come close to answering your question? Oh, I'll try to ask it better. What yeah. what other factors contributed to the problems in the second half of last year? Last year, uh, well, that was the number one. Probably, probably uh, issue as far as uh, personnel um, didn't get any turnovers. You know, didn't create t takeaways like we are this year. We've we've had a pretty good run of interceptions and and getting the ball uh, taken away. Special teams uh, last year, although it wasn't bad, uh, wasn't having the impact that it has had so far this season. So probably those two or three things combined. Kyle, can you break down uh, the, uh, the the uh, special teams play and why it's been so effective? Is it just a matter of having good players, or what's going into this? That's certainly the the biggest factor is is the talent level. We've got an excellent kicker, Nanny Phillips. Uh, Hackett is one of the nation's best punters. Clay is one of the nation's best return men. And outside of that, we have all the guys, the supporting cast buying into what we're doing on special teams. You know, Clay has returned, what, four kicks for touchdowns, but it's not all Kalen Clay. It's a bunch of guys working their tails off to, to block for him and get him, get him space so we, can, so we can make that happen. And then, uh, you know, with Andy and, and Tom, they're just very, very talented at what they do. And uh, that whole thing has added up to some pretty good special, place, special teams play so far. <clears throat> You, you coach special teams, right? Can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about what goes into that and the emphasis on it? Well, um, it, it's all, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the, the, the point person with special teams, but we do have uh, what we call uh, lead coaches for, for the other phase. I, I handle the punt team myself. Coach Scally handles the kickoff team. Coach Shaw handles punt return. And Coach Stubblefield handles kickoff return. And uh, collaborative effort with uh, PAT field goal. Jim Harding handles the protection. We have different ver uh, uh, responsibilities within that. But for me, it's just a matter of keeping it organized, making sure throughout the work week, uh, the practice week, that we have uh, the right amount of time devoted to uh, each phase, uh, meeting time and on the field, um, making sure that the uh, you know the content of the scout report and just all the detail stuff that go in, goes into uh, preparing for a game, special teams-wise, is in order. And so I'm not going to sit here and say it's, uh, you know, I'm doing everything because I'm not, but I'm, I'm the guy that uh, is responsible to get it structured. Last year, uh, Sean Mannion and Brandon Cooks kind of gave you some fits. Obviously, uh, Cooks <coughs> is in the NFL now. But what are you seeing from Mannion this year, and, and maybe what's different this year as opposed to last year? Yeah, well, first of all, Cooks was, I thought, the best receiver in the Pac-12 last year. The guy was a uh, phenomenal talent. And, uh, you know, as far as uh, this year as opposed to last year, uh, you know, they're, they're running the football better this year than they were last year. As a team, they've got two backs that are uh, – a uh, one-two punch. There's, you know, they both, ironically enough, have the exact amount of carries, and I think within a yard or two of each other as far as the total yards for the season, net yards. So they're getting good production there. Sean uh, Mannion's numbers are a little bit off this year as opposed to last year. He had that monster game against us last year, and and several others. You know, he was several weeks last year where he put up uh, big-time numbers, and and uh, hasn't quite had that. Uh, statistical impact this year, but he's still a great leader for them and doing things they need to have, have him do to win games, which which they've done. You guys did a great job of pressuring Brett Hundley. He's obviously very mobile. Uh, Mannion's more of a drop back guy. Does that change the philosophy, especially in the pass rush a lot? A little bit, but uh, Sean does a nice job of getting the ball out of his hands quick and making quick decisions. 
and uh, hasn't been hasn't been sacked excessively this year. But uh, you you do approach it differently when you have a guy that's not a true du a true dual threat and and where the running element is not as prevalent with Mannion as it was with Hundley and some of the other guys. You do approach that a little differently. Last year they threw a lot of Max Pro your way. Mm -hmm. Do you expect to see that same scheme from these guys? And also, can you get pressure with four against that Max Pro scheme? Well, yeah, we did uh, see a lot of Max Pro last year, and and uh, I think you know to get Brandon Cooks, have, let him have time to do his thing and get open. Uh, we expect to to see a certain dose of it again this year. You know, I, mean, I can't predict exactly, but but that has been a part of Coach Riley's scheme for a lot of years is is uh, getting max protection and and uh, two man routes and, and sometimes three man routes. But but uh, we expect a balanced attack, which they've been uh, so far this season, getting about 100. And, 30 or 40 rushing the football and another uh, 250 or so throwing, which in this day and age is pretty balanced. Last season, Travis Wilson had a career high 142 rushing yards, I think it was, and three touchdowns, mostly on read option and quarterback keepers. Are you seeing the read option as something you can use again this season to exploit Oregon State's defense? Well, it's, you know, when you run the spread offense, it's got to be a part of what you do every week. And it's really a week-to-week -week thing, and I don't, I don't think there was anything necessarily uh, going into that game that we we're going to try to exploit. It just happened. I mean, how how players react and how they how they do, uh, you know, how they execute their assignments and their techniques. Uh, some weeks it's there, and some weeks it's not. And so we didn't have uh, the uh, thought process going into that game. Hey, this is going to be a big week for the for the zone read. It just happened to to shake out that way, and that's usually the, how it works. There's not a with everybody doing. Uh, or not everybody, but so much spread offense in the nation now. Everybody's becoming accustomed to how to how to defend it and how the defensive ends need to play and so forth. And so, uh, I don't think that uh, last year, you know, there was a big emphasis on it. And but you know, this year, if if we uh, if it's there and we can capitalize, and we will. But if it's not, then you got to go a different direction. Last year, you beat Stanford and then kind of had a, a letdown the next week. Have you told the guys anything about after this big win against UCLA, what to guard against? Yeah, we've talked about that. And I don't want to say, uh, I don't know if I agree with letdown. We just, uh, we didn't get the win against Arizona. We lost Travis uh, in the first half. Actually, it was the first series or two, I think, is when he hurt his hand. And we actually were right in the ball game to the very, very end. The score was a little more uh, the differential was a little more than how the game actually was. I think Kadeem Carey popped a run on us in the last drive to to make it uh, out of reach. But but uh, we definitely have had that conversation. How we didn't capitalize on on a big win last year uh, versus Stanford, and the, the timing of the game is almost identical. I think Stanford was week six last year uh, rather than week five, which the UCLA game was. And so anyway, it's a one game at a time mentality. But we hope to have a better result throughout the second half of the season this year than we did last year. Kyle, do you have any thoughts on your uh, former colleagues at Mississippi State and what they've been able to accomplish getting to number one? Oh, absolutely. They're doing a great job. And uh, Danny Mullen's a heck of a football coach. I, I text Brian back and forth. We text this weekend. I congratulated him on, on the big win. It was Auburn this weekend that they knocked off. And, and – uh, Dan's done a great job there assembling a good football team. They got a quarterback that's unbelievable, and uh, happy to see it happen. I'm I'm happy for those guys. Yeah, just comment uh, it's becoming every week, but things in the Pac-12. Everybody has a conference loss now, and it's yeah, early. yeah. With uh, you wouldn't thought wouldn't have thought that just through three weeks, three or four weeks of conference play, three for some guys, four for other. I guess two weeks for some of us, but but to have everyone have a loss this early is uh, Unusual, but not unexpected. You know, I, I could see, uh, you know, from my own vantage point and my own opinion going in, that it was a very balanced league, and there's a lot of a lot of. Uh, uh, I don't want to. I hate the word parity, but there's there's just balance in the league, and if you're not ready to play every week, you're going to get beat. That's uh, that's what's happened so far, and you may even see a two-loss team uh, win the North or the South. You know, we'll have to see how things shake out, but it doesn't surprise me. Uh, Oregon State has a top 10 passing efficiency defense, and they um, have held opponents to pretty few yards uh, by comparison to the Pac-12. Um, you know, do you see something about the secondary or maybe the defense as a whole that has made them effective against opposing passers? Well, uh, Coach Banker, their defensive coordinator, has been there a lot of years. Uh, in fact, uh, 
I don't know how many years he's been there, eight, ten, maybe even beyond that. He's been there for a while, done a great job, always has a stingy defense. Uh, they're a quarters coverage team. That's their base coverage, and they run it very well. They know exactly what they're doing um, with that coverage, and, and you know they do some other things as well. But you're going to get that coverage about 65% of the time when you're, when you're playing these guys, and, and they're just coached up exceptionally well they've got good technique the corners in that particular coverage you got to have two corners that can that can hold up in in uh, one-on-one situations which they have had and do have this year and i think that's really the formula consistency in what they're doing been doing the same thing for a lot of years and they've got good players